This is SEMA, the biggest automotive trade show in the world. And for the last three years, I was asked to bring my best builds to show the world what my team and I were capable of. But since this year, I bought a $2 million McLaren P1 that had some slight flood damage, I knew it had to be at that show. The only issue is that two weeks before the show, it looked like this. And now it's up to us to race against the clock and put together the mother of all project car builds. Now, one of the most important aspects of any car build is the car's looks. And this car is gonna be different from any other P1. Now, I have already told you guys that I am doing an exposed carbon uh, sort of livery but I haven't told you guys the color. That is sort of a point of contention in this build because in order to put color on this exposed carbon, that means that we're gonna have to do a lot of paint work, a lot of sanding, a lot of clearing, and that's gonna take a lot of time and this car needs to go to SEMA. So I've made the decision and we are gonna do a color reveal at SEMA. Now what that means is I'm not gonna just bring the car looking all uh, haggard and scratched and broken. We have a custom wrap for SEMA and the people that are doing it are right here, right now and they're Tint World Orlando. You see their uh, sign right there? That's not an accident. Uh, we got the guy, Pete from Tint World and he is here right now. Come on, come on. How's yeah. it going? Yeah, so this guy is, he, he knows everything there is to know about vinyl wrapping, about tinting, about basically anything in this world. And uh, we're gonna do some stuff to my P1. Now, have you ever done a P1 before? Never. No. Okay. I mean, we've done a speed tail. That's, okay. the, that's probably the fanciest, craziest McLaren that we've ever worked on. Okay, so uh, have, you ever, <laughs> have you ever done a car that's been underwater? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure people bring us stuff that looks like it's been underwater, okay. but uh, this, I mean, confirmed underwater, this is definitely the first time. Can you go over the process of what it takes to install a vinyl wrap? And we're not just doing any vinyl wrap. I'll show you the wrap in a second. We're doing a custom camel wrap for Valvoline since the car's gonna go in the Valvoline booth. It's gonna be tricky. So we're gonna need to get all the surfaces smoothed out first. So everything on here will need to be as smooth as it possibly can be, because otherwise you'll see those imperfections through the vinyl. And then we'll start prepping it. Uh, we'll do a full alcohol rinse on everything uh, and then we'll start looking at the contours and seeing exactly how we're gonna lay things out. Uh, we'll lay the vinyl out across it and just start working on it panel by panel. So I'm gonna let the experts do their expert thing. I'm gonna sit back and then I will do what I do and that's supervise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you're doing wrong, I'm gonna point fingers and I'm gonna order lunch. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Now, vinyl wrapping is a great way to change the design or color of a car temporarily. And if done right, it can protect the car's paint. But it takes a trained eye and a steady hand to install it. So that means I should probably sit this one out. So I don't know if you guys know this, but we are pretty busy around here. But since the guys are working on wrapping the P1, I have a little bit of downtime, which gives me the perfect opportunity to play today's sponsor, War Thunder. So War Thunder is a top military action free-to-play multiplayer game available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and also Mac. It's an epic confrontation involving dozens of renowned and prototype vehicles, either ground and air or naval and air. The latest update, Sons of Attila, added an entire family of unique Hungarian ground vehicles to the game. In addition, aerial battles have become even more atmospheric thanks to the voice warning systems that have been added, like those in modern fighters. 
Graphics have been improved with the new visual effects that now dynamically change depending on lighting. War Thunder perfectly captures the scale and intensity of battles. Stunning detail of locations, realistic sound, and advanced effects provide full immersion. The game features a unique damage system. Vehicles don't have a health bar and individual modules can be destroyed, so if you puncture a plane's fuel tank, it'll catch fire, and if you damage the tank's tracks, it'll be immobilized. It's super realistic. The game offers equipment from the early 20th century to the present. Each tank, aircraft, helicopter, and boat is meticulously recreated and unique to operate. And in War Thunder, each vehicle can be upgraded with additional modules, smoke grenades, active protection systems, dynamic armor, and many more. War Thunder provides a fresh look at modern warfare and technologies used in the 21st century, including recon and strike drones, as well as nuclear strikes that completely destroy the map. And you can give individuality to each machine. You can change its appearance, add decorations, or embellish it with various decals. And you got deserts, forests, snow-covered mountains. Each map is inspired by real-world locations and the diverse landscapes and unique features of the terrain that make each battle super unique. And War Thunder is constantly introducing something new. Players who stopped playing in the past will certainly enjoy all new additions. You can download War Thunder for free by using the link in the video description below. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder for half a year or more will receive some special bonuses. Rentals for the P-40E1 aircraft, an M4 tank for a week, along with free unique skins, a special decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, three premium vehicles for free, and you get a week of premium account and even more gifts. You guys need to hurry up because the American Vehicle Bonus Season is gonna end soon. So check out War Thunder in the video description below right now. Now, not every panel is ready because this panel had the mold made of it uh, for the uh, carbon fiber version of this. And we're gonna be painting the carbon fiber version. This is gonna get wrapped. Uh, before we do that, it has to get sanded. And Jack told me that he has a fancy pan sander that doesn't create any dust at all. Um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. I got dust in my eye earlier, so I mean. Did, did, some, did something happen? Did something happen to he? See, Jack said that his car was gonna be ready by the end of September, and it wasn't, and that's what happened, okay? Basically what we gotta do is we gotta remove all the mold release on this thing so that we'll actually have the wrap sticking to it. It's coming off it, pretty It easy. comes off really easily. Dude, yeah. watch the paint. I want you guys to look at this because uh, look at the amount of body work that's on this piece. This is from the factory. This has never been redone or anything. That is a ton of filler. I'm kind of wondering how much body filler they put on here and how much weight that added to the car. Probably a good amount. Like, I mean, like a honest, few pounds? honestly, I would say, I mean, if you put a gallon on there, I, I would say about a gallon, honestly. Did you do this? Did yeah. you work at McLaren? I mean, they're, they're after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you would have done it. This is how I would have done it. I would have been like, you know what, man? Just, just give me some body filler. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah. let's undo their work. Yeah, let's do this. One of my favorite things in life is watching a true professional work at his craft. You can see Jack using his 12 plus years of experience in bodywork to smooth down the hood surface in no time at all. And not to be outdone, the Tint World techs are installing a seriously complex wrap on a car with compound curves and no flat panels. The phrase, making it look easy, is an understatement.
This looks fantastic. You guys did a fantastic job. And I like the uh, design, sort of livery and uh, camo nature of this. And it's gonna look wonderful with the exposed carbon and the gold accents. This car is gonna make a lot of people happy and uh, we need to get to work now. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you to Tint World and uh, yeah, I, uh, I, need, I need to get to work. Thank you, appreciate everything and can't wait to see it out in Vegas. We wheelbarrowed the P1 into place on the two post lift and rolled the engine into place. And then find out at the last minute that the P1's transmission doesn't fit without modification. All right, so what we're gonna do now is modify the P1's transmission, which has a hybrid drive assembly right here. And everything past this is actually exactly the same as any other McLaren transmission, the same as a 650, 720, uh, 570. 570 is slightly different, but basically everything is here. Uh, so when we take this off, we're gonna get a good look into the transmission and we're gonna see if any water got into it. So uh, I'm interested in seeing that. And if water got into it, then we have another transmission that we can put into this because again, they're the same transmission. Uh, but before that, I have to flip it on its side. And I don't know if you could tell, this is heavy. This is a very heavy transmission. It's a dual clutch uh, with a hybrid drive assembly and probably has a ton of water and, and rust in it. So, um, oh. and the floor is slippery. The floor, that's not good. Yep, I got it. Sweet. Okay. Let's That's, do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. We didn't get that on camera. Uh, so now all I got to do is... Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Yep. Actually, that's not, not too, bad. too bad. I mean, she could use a, a filter or two, but so this is the this is the dual clutch. It's not bad at all. Now, what we have to do is we have to put this 720 bell housing on there. Just test fitting this right now. But that stud might have to go. Look at that. Like it was meant to go there because it was. Let's mate this to the engine. Putting in a McLaren engine is a little bit different than any other engine because you put it in through the bottom of the car. Now it sits on a subframe, which is like a, uh, a kind of triangle. And then you put it in the car and hopefully it all fits. I don't actually know that this is gonna fit because uh, nobody's ever done this with a P1 before. Um, there is like a little bit of a difference in spacing here and spacing with the, uh, the dog bone mounts in the front, but hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we will have this in the car in just a few short moments. With the engine finally on the cradle, we roll the powertrain under the car and then lower the car down on it. Oddly enough, this is the easiest and most stress-free part of the process. Oh, and just like that, the new engine is in the car. Look at that, we can send it to SEMA. There is a reason why we put the engine in and while we're going to SEMA, we're actually not gonna have the engine running but I wanted to show everybody what the concept of this car is gonna be uh, because it's gonna be quite special. But one of the biggest things on a car, especially like this, when you see the exposed engine bay has to be the exhaust. 
and we are gonna have something very, very special. In fact, the guy that is making the exhaust is here. His name is Chris and he owns a company called Unobtainium Welding. Now you might have heard that uh, on the internet, on YouTube, uh, from other YouTube channels. They make the best exhausts for McLarens, for Porsches, for literally anything. They make titanium and it's all kind of made to order. And it's all very bespoke. Now they've never done a P1, they've never done a P1 Evo, and this is gonna be a really cool challenge. So uh, we have, Chris, come over here. I have to apologize. I'm very sweaty and dirty. We just put an engine in, but uh, Chris came all the way from Calgary, Canada, and uh, now he's gonna be putting uh, some, some stuff in our car. Yes, you bet. Hope it fits. We got some big tube stuff to go in there. Now you tell me, hope it fits. <laughs> we, got, we got a whole three and a half days before we have to <laughs> get this thing yeah. on our truck to SEMA, but uh, you know, he has a good hotel and uh, we have a lot of welding equipment. So we're gonna make this work. So because we were planning on pretty big power, we're gonna start with four inch, right four off inch. the turbine. And then as we come into the exhaust, we'll taper into three and a half and we'll do it a three and a half inch titanium X-pipe. Okay, so we're doing like an X-pipe, so it, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna look fantastic. Yep. And we're using all uh, Tycon products um, and he's gonna be TIG welding this entire thing. And uh, we are actually, we're not gonna be doing like a whole blue theme uh, because Honestly, I want the car to do that. Um, if you guys don't know, when you have a titanium exhaust, whenever you drive it hard, that's when it starts bluing, and I yep. think that's gonna be the best thing for it. So um, now that I have the engine in the car, he can actually start work. He got here yesterday, and I told him I was gonna have the engine in the car yesterday. <laughs> that was not the truth. Uh, we just got it in today, and now we have to scramble to get these in. But uh, he is the man for the job, and if you ever need a really good, really amazing sounding and performing exhaust, definitely hit up Unobtainium Welding and Unobtainium Exhaust. Uh, the link will be in the description below. All right, you have some work ahead of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down. Whew. <laughs> now it's my turn and it is tight. Oh boy, there's a lot of tube to fit in a very small hole off of these turbos. That's what she said. At the risk of sounding dumb, I'll just say that metal fabrication is hard. But what Chris is doing is on another level altogether. He's using the kind of standard operating procedure that fits right in with NASA, and that is not an exaggeration. Titanium is unforgiving and extremely expensive. That's why an exhaust from him would cost upwards of $20,000, and it would be worth every penny. So why are X-pipes necessary for uh to, to make power? Well, truly on a V8 like this, which is a flat crank V8, you shouldn't need one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we find they still sound better with some crossover of the sound. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of some of the canceling of the frequencies yeah. is what you hear. Mm -hmm. So it, we just find that it sounds better. And to be honest, on the huge horsepower builds, you can have more power with straight pipes, mm -hmm. but they sound a little bit like a tractor down low. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of those things you could give up maybe 10 horsepower for a sweeter sound. Mm -hmm. And on a car that makes a thousand horsepower, that's generally worth it. So I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We're not gonna start the engine in this episode because uh, we're gonna need a lot more custom touches. But just so you guys know what an unobtainium exhaust sounds like, here's a few clips. Chris may be a master welder, but my P1 needs professionals from all walks of life. So I went to visit an exceptional man about an exceptional part of the project. All right, everyone, we are in a very special place. We are in Mitchell Collision here in Land Lakes, Florida, because I have a very special guy willing to do a very special job. And that is this man right here, Mr. Candyman. You got you got the logo in the back over there. That's really, really cool. I like the branding. So you know everything there is to know about candy paint jobs. What's the difference between like a candy paint job and like a regular paint job? So the candy is a transparent clear mm -hmm. that goes over the top of like a base coat, which gives you the depth of the actual paint job looking really special. Instead of this being a solid color, and I know 
you guys uh, notice this. Uh, this is my exposed carbon hood. We're gonna paint this, but you're gonna be able to see all the carbon underneath the paint. So instead of do, just doing a regular paint job, which would, look, honestly, it would look pretty good, this guy is gonna make it look fantastic because you've been doing it for how long? 28 years. 28 years, okay, so not your first time. No, <laughs> hopefully not my last. <laughs> No, you are you are the guy to talk to because uh, Brian from Paint Society, he had only good things to say and I've seen your work. I think we're going to try a dark red with this and then we're going to make it very custom because not only do you have to just put, well, you have to put a clear on it and then you have to put candy on top, but you can mess with that clear a little bit to put like more flake in it and then make it, you know, sort of a custom color all on its own. So I'm going to leave this here and we are going to be displaying this at SEMA. I am super excited, and this is, I mean, this is the most, this is the biggest project I've ever had. I don't know about you, have you had any P1s in the shop? This is it for me. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, so first P1, hopefully not the last. Yeah. Uh, Especially candy on a P1. Yeah. That's, that in itself is a big deal. I think so. So I'm gonna leave this with you. If anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be you. And uh, where can people find you? Candyman on YouTube and Car Candyman on Instagram as well. So that's my two uh, places to see me. Putting down a good coat of candy paint is an art form. First, Candyman matches a base metallic color to simulate the carbon fiber. Then he mixes it up on a calibrated paint scale. After that's sprayed and dried, he mixes the color one lighter red and one darker. They say watching paint dry is pretty boring, but I think watching paint spray is awesome. All right, let's see what this all looks like. So we have, that's the brandy wine, correct? Yeah. I don't even know if you can, I can't tell on camera, but that looks that looks much darker. But if you take a look at the red, look, let's see in the, look at that. It is super hard to focus. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is like a very deep red with, yeah, there's, there's a lot of flake in it. I like this a lot. I think if we can see the carbon through this, this is this is what we're going to go with. What do you think? Oh yeah. Looks <laughs> good. Now one of the things that I wanted to keep secret on this build was the interior design of this car. And I I, I just got to show you now because it's here and take a look at it. So this is a custom interior for my P1 Evo made by none other than Matt from E3 Customs. Of course, it's him because he makes the best interiors in the world. And this is the best looking P1 interior I've ever seen. Yeah. So uh, what, what's the process here like? Because there's a lot going on. You got, you got the seat design, you got uh, Alcantara, then you got the stitching, yeah. you got stitching here, you got clear coating. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So. When we talked about it, we were trying to come up with a design. We weren't really sure about colors or all of that, but we wanted to do something that was flowy, but still had intersecting lines. So I really liked how the saber breaks up the seat. So they yeah. do like this whole like swoop thing down the side. Mm -hmm. And at first I put the seat together like that, didn't have any of these other accent lines going down the middle. And I was like, just looks a little too plain. For yeah. what you want on the car. Mm -hmm. So then I added, you know, just those two lines on each side going down, meeting in the middle to a straight line right down the middle. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be kind of cool. 
But the one thing you said that you really wanted was that intersecting design yes. that I had showed you once before. The only place on this interior where you could really do it were these bigger panels. So that's where that design came from. It just had to go right on that spot. Mm -hmm. And then we carried it over into the door panels because you know, it just needed to have a little bit of it together to all make sense and be cohesive. Yeah, and it looks fantastic, dude. And not only did we do the door panels in that design, but we also, um, when I say we, I mean you, um, <laughs> we, we also put uh, a clear coat over the door panels because everything on the interior has a, uh, you know, it's just carbon fiber finish, but it's matte or it's satin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted it to be uh, glossy because that'll set it apart a little bit. Now, it might give me a little bit more glare on the dashboard area. That has yet to be determined, but I'm willing to go with it for now. Um, Matt also did the uh, floor mats here and they look fantastic. So it's the same sort of leather um, and and black stitching that, uh, that this has and it, it looks it looks fantastic i mean this is the same color as i have in my 675 lt i'm a really really big fan of this this is a bentley english tan yes and uh i think it just looks fantastic in any car and especially this one um this guy is no joke the best interior uh installer and designer and fabricator that i've ever seen uh if anybody wants real good work like this like world-class work then you go to him because he knows everything about this stuff and uh, now you're gonna get you're gonna have all p1 owners coming to you yeah <laughs> thank you for that yeah <laughs> McLaren's you're, you're one of my favorite cars to work on yeah it's okay you know i'll, I'll, I'll just take 10 percent of everything you make sounds so good <laughs> <laughs> no dude th thank you so much no man. problem yeah i appreciate Anytime. it Anytime. And he came over because uh, we're going to be installing this. Now, this is not hard to install. There's four four pieces to this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, he came over because uh, Jack is installing his interior, and we're not going to reveal it yet, but that interior is, no joke, the best interior that any Lancer Evolution has ever had. And I am not joking. That is like a legitimate supercar interior in there. Um, so you should be proud of that. You should be proud of this. You need to... You need to Need to head home. Yeah, you, you got to go home. He lives four hours away. He's going to turn into a pumpkin. We still have a lot of work ahead of us uh, because we got to put this car together for SEMA. We have now reached the all hands on deck portion of the build, where I call in favors from all my friends to pick up a wrench and get to work. Thankfully, I have some pretty good friends. The exhaust was taking shape in a big way, and that wasn't the only reason to celebrate. Now here's something I've been really excited about, and this is a, uh, well, it's a reveal for me as it is for you, because I saw these things in a render, and I haven't seen them in real life, and here they are. We have custom HRE, Oh, dude. dude, that's awesome. That's so pretty. That is nice. It's brushed and clear, dude. Yes, it's brushed clear, and then we have a polished lip here. That looks so good. And look, it. dude, look how wide, look how, look oh, how dude. wide that is. She's thick. Yeah, she's a little, she's a little chunky. She's a little chunky, okay. Um, we have no time to spare. We need to put these wheels on my car. Chris's work on the exhaust was flawless and it fit without issue, ready to make some insane noise. And speaking of noise.
So it's pretty late in the week and pretty late in the day, and I have made an executive decision because um, we are bringing this car to SEMA, as you know, but we're not bringing it as a finished car, and that was never the intention. We're not trying to do anything to uh, hamper the vision of this car. What I want to bring to SEMA is this car in its project state. Now, we have done a ton of work, but we still have a ton of work left to do. And I want people to see exactly where we are in the project. So, instead of sort of making this into what it's not, I want people to see it for what it is. So, what that means is that we are going to have this all exposed. Not only are we going to have the engine exposed, we're going to have the carbon tub exposed because no one gets to see this. And I want you guys, if you're coming to SEMA, to see everything that we've accomplished because this was a monumental task just to get it to this state. And uh, we're also going to have the seats in there because uh, the seats that uh, Matt from E3 Customs made are fantastic and I think they really set off the car. But it also gives you a glimpse into the future of this project. And uh, this project we're going to bring to the next SEMA running, driving, and hopefully it'll be the fastest McLaren in the world. But right now we are putting everything together. We're putting the brakes on. Uh, Rex is taking off some of the uh, urethane stripping right here. And then we're going to get the rear wheels on. Then we have to finish up the exhaust. And then we're going to go to the dry ice lab to give it a once over. And then it has to drive across the country to make it to SEMA. Now I can say installation is the reverse of removal on this car, but that wouldn't be true. Every component we put in is modified in some way, and that means sometimes persuasion is necessary. After what seemed like an eternity, the wheels are put on and the car can finally roll on its own weight. The first time it's done that in several months. And a quick note, trying to turn the very grippy wheels of a car that has no steering wheel is a great way to get your fingers trapped inside a wheel well. At least the car was light and easy to push. So we are now at the dry ice lab. It is past midnight. I don't know if uh, I should be talking this loudly, but uh, we're gonna do a midnight dry ice blasting to get this clean enough for SEMA and we're going to install some parts along the way and then it's going to go in there and go across the country and then uh, I'm done. The project is done. It's not done, not, not even close, but I want you guys to see it. I want everybody that comes to SEMA to see this car and I'm really proud of it. Even in its state, even if it in its project car state, I'm super proud of what we have accomplished because this, is, this has been such a labor of love and uh, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that went into this car and still will go into this car. Uh, I'm rambling right now because I'm emotional and I'm tired, but I want you guys to see this and it, I'm so proud of it. All right, we're here at the dry slab and we basically want to just approach anything we can to make it look better and look more new and not according to the history that this car might have had. So all of this aluminum stuff is going to be really awesome to do. There's all kinds of dirt and crud in places that you wouldn't normally see. So we're going to make sure that, that stuff's all gone. It's really that simple. We got a nice little, our newest little 030 ICS machine, and we're going to turn the booth on, be a little loud. I'm going to suit up because that way it's clean for me and I can go home at 2.30 in the morning and go right to bed. We're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna say this is going to take a, a quick 15 minutes. 15 minutes and this will be good to go. That's the good thing about Dreis. Uh, you know, you have, uh, you can make a car pristine in no time at all. That's not true. That's not true. It actually takes a long time and uh, you need a, a trained professional. And Scott is that trained professional. He knows everything there is to know about uh, dry ice cleaning. So um, take care of my baby. She's all I got. <laughs> Now, if you've never seen what dry ice can do, it's the cleanest you can ever get a car. It requires some very specialized equipment and a person that knows what they're doing, but the results speak for themselves.
two hours in the dry ice booth and the car was ready to be put back together. Thankfully, I brought a bucket of bolts with me so we can put the finishing touches on what was an epic thrash to get this car done in time for the biggest car show on earth. Okay, 2.30 in the morning and the car is done. It's going to SEMA. We're loading it up on the trailer and it looks fantastic. We have the new HRE wheels on there. We have all the hydraulic lines powder coated. We have the frame powder coated. We have the brand new unobtainium exhaust. We have the Valvoline camo wrap. And then we have some bits and pieces that we haven't revealed yet and we also have that amazing cannonball engine that we still have to uh, start up and uh, run and tune and that's going to be really really fun but right now we got to get this thing on the road it's 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 real late i'm tired i'm rambling but i am i'm super emotional i am super happy that we got this going and now uh i i can i can get to sleep i hope because i hope this car gets there and i hope everybody Everybody likes it. But right now, I wanted to give a big thanks to, first of all, all of you for, for watching and uh, liking and subscribing. Thank you so much. But everybody that has been a part of this build up till now, we have uh, Scott from the Dry Ice Lab. We're, we're here right now, and he's, uh, he's missing sleep because of this. We have the guys at Cannonball. We have Matt from E3 Customs. We have Unobtainium, Chris from Unobtainium Exhaust. Uh, and there's so many other people that I'm not mentioning right now because my brain doesn't work right now. But... Um, it's it's been it, it's been a it's been a big journey, and uh, we still got a lot to go. It bears repeating that none of this would have been possible without the people around me. Challenges like this can be daunting and overwhelming at times, but with some good friends, any hard night can be a fond memory. I don't think I deserve the people around me, but I sure am glad to have them, and I can't wait for the world to see my car. Thanks for watching.